<laughs> I bought I bought a ring I bought a ring light. I don't know how to use it yet. I bought a ring light and then <laughs> this is the first video that I'm doing with it. And do you know what no one ever tells you about a ring light is how bad you look in it. How bad you look under a ring light. How do all of these people look so good under a ring light? It it, it, it shows up all of your, your dark circles and your, your wrinkles and your stubble and all of the things that you try so desperately hard to hide. Now, I want to thank my patrons. <laughs> what do I want to thank them for? I want to thank my patrons for telling me that this video was going to be a good idea. I asked my patrons if they would like me to see a drunken analysis review thingy of No Longer Human because I was too afraid to do a sober video about this very depressing and dark and upsetting and difficult novel. And they said yes, that's, that's a great idea, Will. So that's what I did. I have made this video. I haven't made it yet. I am making this video. I am not a, a, a much of a drinker and so I drank a bottle of wine and here I am. I'm not one of those people, you know when you go around your friend's house and they say, hey, do you want a beer? And they open up their fridge and there's beer. I'm not one of those people. I had to go out and buy a bottle of wine for this because I just don't drink. I'm not much of a drinker. No Longer Human was the final novel by Osama Desai before he killed himself. Osama Desai died in a double suicide with a woman that he was sleeping with. I think he was married at the time, so I guess you can call her his mistress. I'm not sure if that's an outdated term. And before he did that, he wrote this novel, which was serialized, and just as he wrote the, the last bit, of this book, he then did the, the thing. And this is an I novel. This is a piece of auto fiction about Osamu Dazai himself. It is autobiographical to a point. The protagonist in this is a, an artist, a painter, a cartoonist, and Osamu Dazai himself was a writer, an author, etc. But Aside from that difference, this book, as far as I know, is pretty autobiographical. And it tells the story of a young man who is struggling with his life with depression, with anxiety, but those things are never named. Instead, it is about him examining himself as an outcast from society, someone who is unable to exist as a human being in ordinary society. It is a desperately sad story. When I first started reading it, the way he describes himself is as a person who cannot live within ordinary society. He felt very edgelord-ish. He felt like one of those young men who thinks they're the Joker. He thinks that he is different, and I just felt animosity towards him. I was like, oh, shut up. <laughs> I felt like he was a rubbish version of the protagonist of Earthlings by Sayaka Murata, but that is not the case. I was very wrong. Osama Desai has written himself as a character here who is a desperately sad case. From his very inception as a human being, he is nothing but extraordinary, but not in the way that you think. Let me back up. So the book actually is, is bookended by these two bits, this prologue and epilogue from this protagonist, no, not protagonist, this guy who has found a notebook, uh, a trilogy of three notebooks, and he reads the first notebook in the prologue, and it is just three photographs. He He's a guy who's looking at three photographs of a person, and that person is our protagonist. And it's a photo of him as a child, as a teenager, and then as an adult. And this man just takes pity on this person and says, look at the state of him, Jesus Christ. And then you go into his life and it's separated into these three notebooks that categorize those three time periods, him as a child, a teenager, and an adult. As a child, he decides that the only way that he can survive within the human world, within society, is to be a class clown, to be a joker character, a sad clown approximation of a thing that would entertain people as a way of hiding his true self. He is afraid of exposing himself. He's afraid of being found out as a reject of society. And at first you're like, this is all in his own head, but then you come to realize that, I smudge my makeup, that is just his life, that is just his existence. And so he does his best to disguise himself through this comedy. A bunch of awful things happen to him, but there's the one notable moment where he is clowning around in gym class and this other kid comes up to him and sort of taps him on the shoulder and says, you did that on purpose. The protagonist pretends 
that he did a thing for comic effect and this other kid says, no, I know that you did that on purpose. You're clowning around. And then he feels seen, he feels exposed, he feels like he's been found out. And so he opens up to this other kid and he shows him these portraits that he's made of himself. These, I think he calls them ghosts. He sees himself as this ghost in society. And so he shows these pictures of himself that I pictured to be like the pictures of Francis Bacon, the screaming Pope, those awful pictures that Francis Bacon made of people just looking so distorted and exposed and, and frightening. And he does describe these pictures as being just terrifying and this other kid is the only person he can open up to, so he does. And then you move into the second notebook, which is him as a young man, that transitional period between being a teenager and a young person. He's in Tokyo and he is kind of uh, making his way as an artist, and this is when he is a Dorian Gray kind of a character. I kept thinking of the picture of Dorian Gray. In the picture of Dorian Gray, the titular Dorian Gray has a friend. I think that friend is Henry. Let's call him Henry. It probably is Henry, I can't remember. Let's call him Henry. He meets Henry and Henry teaches Dorian Gray how to be... hedonistic, that's the word. I always forget that word. He teaches Dorian Gray how to express, no, how to explore, how to experience life in the most hedonistic and exciting way possible. But Dorian Gray really takes that to the nth degree and it doesn't go well for him at all. And you've only really got Henry to blame as far as I remember. Dorian Gray is really good. You should get, get a pic, get a, get a, get a copy of Dorian Gray and just open it up to any page. Put your thumb in it and then just read a line and it's just the, 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 the best poetry. Dorian Gray is so good. My vision really came into focus when I talked about Dorian Gray. That's the power of that book. No Longer Human by Osama Dozai feels like Dorian Gray because the protagonist meets this guy. I think his name is Horiki. Let's call him Horiki. It probably is Horiki. And he meets him and Horiki is teaching our protagonist bad lessons in survival, I guess. And our protagonist turns to alcoholism and he turns to womanization. He becomes a womanizer. Our protagonist is not a nice guy. He is an awful, depressed, anxious mess of a human being, as we've already established. And he turns to alcoholism, and that is this main thing in this book. He is just an absolute drunk, which I realize is ironic. As I said, I'm not much of a drinker, okay? He turns to alcoholism as a manner of survival, but he also is trying to be an artist. He's struggling to create art, and he becomes a painter, a cartoonist, etc. And he is being influenced by this friend who is just teaching him terrible lessons. He's, he's the Henry to this guy's Dorian Gray. And he's not doing well. He's womanizing. He has that uncanny ability to charm and impress people through comedy. And it's very, very easy for him as a handsome person in Tokyo who has these eccentricities to woo women and manipulate them, I guess, for, for lack of a better word. And in the second notebook, spoilers, he commits a double suicide with this woman. She actually dies and he ends up surviving it. And it's weird because that's exactly what Osama Desai did after completing the third notebook. I didn't read much up on this as, as, as much as I should, or I've forgotten it. And that's so weird to think that he wrote that in before actually then doing it. That, that ugh, sends a shiver down your spine, doesn't it? So that's what happens. He survives it and things only really get worse for him from there. The notebooks one to three get worse as they go. It's a really difficult story. This is the story of a young man who is so desperately pathetic, but y you feel bad for him, you hate him. You hate him for being a womanizer, for being misogynistic, for being self-destructive and therefore also destructive of other people because when we self-destruct, when we have that attitude, we also end up destroying the people around us. This is why I wanted to drink a bottle of wine before I talked about this book. This guy is depressed, but we never hear that word. Depression, anxiety, mental illness, none of these things are ever mentioned, but they are real. They are a part of, if not all of Osama Desai and therefore, what's his name? Yozo. Yozo's character is very much that. He is a depression personified. He is attempting to survive amongst people within society and doing a terrible, terrible job of it. So he plays the Joker, he manipulates people, he turns to alcohol, he is an absolute wreck, and you just feel sorry for him. You're angry at him, 
you sympathize with him, maybe you even empathize with him, you also hate him, and you judge him, and then you cry for him. There's so much going on in terms of our relationship as a reader to Yozo as a character. He is such a pathetic, sad, unenviable human being. He's so awful, but he's, oh, there's so much going on. And things happen to him that are out of his control, that other characters do. And things happen to the people that he loves, or an approximation of love. You know, he talks about how he can't love, and he doesn't understand love, and he doesn't understand anything that humans do. And he thinks of himself as an alien and an outcast, etc. And that's why I kind of thought of this as a lesser Earthlings. But it isn't. It's different. It's different, Willow. It's different. In his translator's introduction, Donald Keane talks about how this book is actually, in Japanese, called Disqualified as a Human, or at least that's a better name for it. That's a closer translation. It's Disqualified as a Human. And I really like that as a name because it also kind of captures the reader's judgment and persecution is a word that springs to mind. The persecution of the character by the reader. This is kind of a judgment that we make on him, is that we have disqualified him from humanity based on his behavior and his actions. And he's also disqualified himself because of his depression and because he cannot fit in. And it's so fascinating that those of us who struggle with mental health issues, anxiety, depression, we quite often feel like we are so ill-equipped to deal with ordinary societal expectations and work and everything, everything, everything. And Osamu Dazai and his protagonist, both, managed to embody that in a really frighteningly accurate way that I just didn't enjoy, but I found very comforting, I suppose. It's really difficult. It's a really, really difficult book. I didn't enjoy it, but you don't have to enjoy all literature. I found it very difficult to read. And for such a short book, it took me so many days to get through. I don't regret my time with it, but my God, at the same time, I wish I could just erase it all, you know? <laughs> No Longer Human is not fun, but it is very good. And I think I read somewhere online that it is considered his last will and testament, and I understand that. Osamu Dazai must have been such a difficult person to know, and he must have lived such a difficult life to survive, even for as long as he did. I feel so sorry for him. I hate him. I hate this protagonist in this book, but I feel so sad for him because it just goes to show how ill-equipped society in its current state is, and in its state 75 years ago, was, to deal with people who need help. It's a very sad situation. No Longer Human is a fantastic book to read. I just can't recommend it at the same time because of how difficult it is. It really depends on you and your state of mind and your capacity for absorbing something like this, something that will chip away at your bones. It's very difficult. If you're in a situation where you feel like you can handle a book like this, please read it. But if you are not, then please don't. There is no like or dislike here. There is no situation where you're rooting for or not rooting for your, your protagonist. That's not what this is. This is something else entirely. And it's harrowing and it's difficult. And I had to get drunk to talk about it. I'm gonna stop talking now. No Longer Human is a fascinating book. Subscribe for books.